Hello and welcome. Omar here for Awesome SVGs. Lately, I've seen a lot of techniques done with stencils. Inking, water stamping, dry embossing, you name it. So, I decided to make my own stencils using my Cricut machine and try different materials for stencils. Last year, I made this Valentine's card using stencils. I cut my stencils from a material called Martha Stewart's Make Your Own Stencils. And what I did was cut three different stencils with the shape of my base card. And I used different uh, stencils for the leaves, um, a different stencil for the uh, bright pink hearts, and a different stencil also for the center heart. I airbrushed all these colors using a Copic airbrush system. This material comes in rolls of 11 inches by 3 yards and the fact that it comes in a roll makes it very hard to flatten it. I've tried everything. A heat gun, a hair dryer and I even left them for like a month or two under a stack of paper but it never uh, got leveled. So what I had to do finally was take the roll and roll it the other way. This kind of did the work. It uh, removed most of the curve of the material and it was easier to put on my mat uh, for cutting but it also left markings on the surface. This is not a very good idea if you want your stencil for um, airbrushing for example where small uh, particles of color can get under your stencil. Remember this material comes with a backing, a piece of a plastic backing that you have to remove in order to cut on your machine. I don't really know what the backing is for um, because this material doesn't have any adhesive or anything so I think it's just to protect the surface from scratching. The material is very flexible and very resistant to tear and due to the large format I think it's great for big designs in case you want to stencil a wall or a big piece of furniture. The material cuts very well on the Cricut Explorer and this is a very intricate and very detailed design and as you can see you can achieve very sharp corners and a very clean cut on the material. I had to create a custom setting for cutting that was um, a two pass 280 pressure with a fi fine tip blade on a standard grip mat. Um, due to the fact that you need a multi-cut for this material as well as for uh, some of the others that I will show you later, um, you have to keep in mind that it will take longer to cut than thinner materials. So make sure you have the time to do that. I like that it has the very on-brand Martha Stewart light blue color, but it's also very transparent. Um, that allows you to see what's going on underneath the stencil at all times and helps positioning the stencil correctly before inking. The second brand I tested was the off-brand stencil sheets. They come in packs of 10 sheets of 8.5 by 11 inches. They are frosted on one side and shiny on the other side. The frosted side helps you um, write on top of it. You can use a pencil or a mechanical pencil to do your markings. You can design directly with a pencil on top of your stencil. And this is a good choice if you want to do uh, manual cutting with an X-Acto knife. Since we are using the Cricut Explorer or a plotter machine to cut this, these stencils, it's not a feature that we'll, we'll be using. Um, the frosted on the stencil also helps you see where the stencil is at all times. 
it is also a very transparent um, material. It's more transparent than the other ones tested. And I think this was the most expensive of the ones uh, I tested, being almost $2 a piece. They cut uh, very well on the Cricut Explorer also. I only had to use a one pass um, 280 pressure uh, with a fine tip blade on a standard grit mat. And um, this is equals to the transparency setting on your machine. Just go to the custom setting um, and select a custom material and that's, that's transparency. Now you can achieve um, very good detail with this stencil. Um, it, as I said, it cuts very well, but it's also a thinner material than the other one. Uh, the other ones I, I tested. Here you can see the small details on the stencil. Being that thin is um, very easy for them to break, or they won't tear easily, but um, it's easier to uh, fold them and break them. Now my two favorite brands are the You Create to Make Your Own Stencil and the Plaid Simply Stencils. They are both um, thicker than the other two materials and um, they are also frosted and um, but they are very transparent. The Plaid material is a little bit thicker than the You Create brand but it's also a little bit more transparent than this one. Here you can see the transparency, the difference in the transparency of these materials. The plaid, um, the plaid brand that you see on the right is a little bit more transparent, but they both have very good transparency and you can see where your stencil is at all times. They're both very resistant materials and they cut very well on the Cricut Explorer. I used a custom setting of a pressure of 320 with a two pass cut and a fine tip blade on a standard grit mat. That um, cuts very well on both these materials. Um, this is the Platt Simply Stencils. As, this, as I said, is a very good material. It cuts very well. You can achieve very good results with this material. And here are some examples of the You Create brand. Also very intricate, very sharp corners and very good detail on your stencils. Here are the three. You can't really tell the difference once they are cut. And here you can see the fine detail on them. sharp corners, very fine lines, and very small um, negative space or holes on your stencils. Now the Plaid Simply stencils come in packs of three sheets of 8 by 10 inches. They are smaller size than the Ucreate brand, so Keep in mind that you will have to cut smaller designs on this uh, sheet of uh, stencil. The um, material is very durable, is very resistant to bending. Just make sure not to bend them all the way because that could leave uh, permanent markings on your stencils that are very hard to uh, remove. Here you can see me bending the material and although it comes back, it doesn't stay as flat as it did before breaking it. Finally, my favorite brand, the Make Your Own Stencil from You Create. These come in packs of 10 12 by 12 inches sheets and I love the fact that the big size allows you to make bigger stencils. And here you have examples, the Plaid on the right, the Ucreate brand 
in the center and the off-brand on the left. Here you can see the difference between these two materials, the off-brand and the Plaid Simply stencils. The off-brand is a lot thinner and it bends and is a little more delicate than the Plaid brand. Now for some techniques you can use your stencils with. First of all, there's inking. For that, you will need some color. In this case, I will be using Distress Inks and Distress Oxide Inks. And you will also need some tools to apply your ink with. You can use ink blending foams, like the ones from Ranger. Also, you can use sponge daubers. These are my favorite for small details. Always keep them labeled so you don't mix the colors up. Now for the technique itself, put your stencil onto your surface. Tape it using masking tape or painter's tape. This is a good idea to avoid the stencil from shifting. And start applying the color with a blending foam. The good thing about the Ucreate and the Plat brand is that you can blend the colors very well without uh, worrying too much about the stencil bending or breaking. The material is very resistant, so it won't shift. Here's the result. As you can see, the ink got inside the negative space of the stencil very well. Now for the off-brand stencil, being thinner, you have to be careful not to do a blending motion, a blending circular motion. Instead of that, do a pouncing motion with your ink. This way, the stencil won't move and you will get very sharp lines. You won't be able to do much blending though with this uh, type of material. For water stamping or alcohol stamping, you first apply a coat of ink on your surface. And depending on the medium that you're using, spray some water for water-based inks and alcohol for alcohol-based inks. Put your stencil on top of your surface, leave it there for a while, and then remove it. You can dry any excess water or alcohol with a paper towel. Remember, the more you leave the stencil, the stronger the effect. For airbrushing, I used to um, use my Copic airbrush system a lot. I like the fact that it's portable that you can use it with uh, cans of compressed air. But the bad thing about it is that you can only use this system with the Copic markers. So if you, you, if you don't have a lot of colors or if you use a different kind of markers, the e-brush is a better option. This is an electronic tool that allows you to airbrush using different uh, pens like Sharpie markers or Spectrum NAR markers and delivers a constant flow of air. The good thing about airbrushing is that you can apply a lot of color in no time and you can do beautiful blending also. Here you see me using the Copic adapter on the e-brush and two different colors. The video is sped up, but it really took no time to make this. And here you can see the beautiful blending you can achieve. All four materials tested are good for this technique. The Platt, the Martha Stewart, the Ucreate, and the off-brand stencil. For embossing using embossing or texture paste, you do the same. You put your stencil down and you tape it to your surface. And use some kind of paste. In this case, I'm using embossing pastes from Dreamweaver and an embossing uh, knife. So you put a good amount of paste and you spread it using the knife on top of your stencil. For this technique, it's better if your stencil has some more 
、uh, thickness. So I like the、um, you create and the plat brand better for this. I wouldn't use the off brand or the Martha Stewart for this technique because they are not very thick. Once you're done, remove your tape and lift your stencil carefully. And here you can see the beautiful result with this technique. Let it dry, and you're good to go. The final technique I'll show you is dry embossing using a die cutting machine. Here is the combination, the sandwich I use for this technique: an A and B plate, a piece of cardstock, and an embossing mat. Put your cardstock on top and your stencil. I like to tape my stencil to the surface. It's a good idea to avoid it from shifting while you run it through your die cutting machine. Now, finally, put a B plate on top and run it through your die cutting machine. In this case, a cuddle bug. Make sure to remove the tape carefully because sometimes it sticks very well to the surface due to the pressure you apply. Remove this stencil, and there you have it—a beautiful texture on your cardstock. Very easy to make. Here, I'll show you some tips and tricks when working with stencils. When designing your stencils, or when you look for designs for your stencils, pay special attention to the negative space of the stencil. That is the holes in your stencil. Do not worry too much about the size or or the thickness of your lines, but instead of how big your holes are for the medium that you will use to get inside. All the materials I tested are very resistant to tearing, so you can design very thin lines without worrying about breaking. In this case, this stencil has. Lines that are 0.7 millimeters thick, which is pretty thin. Now, when cutting your stencils, make sure to remove any loose piece of plastic that might have come off your mat. Pass your hands on top of your stencil, and this will remove any little debris. Make sure to do this every now and then to avoid those little pieces from sticking to your blade. Here you can see a stencil I left unsupervised, and what happened was that a small piece of plastic got stuck on the blade, and it never cut through. It just scratched the surface, as you can see here. So make sure to stay by your machine while cutting. When you remove your stencils, depending on the intricacy of your design, make sure to bend your mat a little bit and pull on the stencil. Do not pull too hard to avoid bending your stencil. That could render your stencil useless. Clean your stencils as soon as you finish using them. For water-based inks, just spray a good amount of water on top of your stencil and dry it with a paper towel or a baby wipe. For alcohol-based inks. Spray some isopropyl alcohol on top of your stencil and dry it immediately. And for embossing pastes, make sure to run your stencil under water to remove any excess paste immediately before it dries. And finally, storing your stencils. Make sure to store your stencils flat. And I like to use special、uh, pockets made for my stencils. I like to use sheet protectors. And here's how I do my pockets. Make sure your stencils fit on your sheet protector. Put a piece of cardstock inside your page protector, and cut on the side, just the top layer. This will give you a pocket where you will put your stencil in. Now, using your fuse tool, seal the top of your page protector. Rearrange your stencils inside of the sheet protector, 
and divide it. This will give you individual pockets for your stencils, which is very useful when you have very intricate designs on your stencil to avoid them from tangling with each other. You can put this pocket on a binder to keep them flat. Thanks for sticking with me. I know it's been a long video. Don't forget to visit awesomesvts.com for links to download the designs of the stencils that I showed you today. And I hope you find some inspiration here. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.